of prayer. So uh, every time we gather, we must also pray. Hallelujah. Now the third thing that should always happen when every time we gather together, whether it's a Sunday um, or you know um, on a Wednesday like this, or in a smaller group, whatever it is, once we gather there, uh, the third thing is that we expect to gain understanding. Somebody say, I expect to gain understanding. Okay, are you in church this evening? Say, I expect to gain understanding. Meaning if there are riddles, if there are puzzles, if there are questions in your life, um, you know, just keep saying, I know that when I come to church, I will get an answer. It's somebody like that. I, I know that when I get to church, I will get an answer. The Bible records uh, David the Psalmist. Uh, at a point, there was a riddle, puzzles in his life they couldn't understand. You know, at a point, he looked like wicked people were prospering. You know, uh, he begins to say, how come the wicked prosper? How come all of this is happening? But the Bible says that, but he got the answer when he came into the house of God. Hallelujah. Is somebody here? So every answer that you're expecting, every time you come to church, uh, expect that God will give you understanding in that area in the name of Jesus. And I believe that tonight God will give you understanding in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about understanding, uh, let's open to Luke chapter 24. Um, I think I'll begin to read from verse 9, uh, the book of Luke chapter 24. Still just talking a little bit about understanding, and I'll tie it out to what we actually came to do uh, tonight. Luke 24, the book of Luke chapter 24. Hemis, me tell your neighbor, look at Luke. <laughs> Say, neighbor, look at Luke. Look at Luke. I'll read from verse 13. Luke at Luke, Luke 24, verse 13. Uh, now, behold, two of them uh, were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus. I'm sure some of us are very familiar uh, with this passage, uh, which was seven miles from uh, Jerusalem. Verse 14. Uh, and they talked together of all these things which had happened, okay? And they talked, the two of them were talking together of the things that had happened. Verse 15, okay? So it was why they conversed and reasoned, why they conversed and reasoned, like it's happening quite now in Nigeria. It's happening a lot. A lot of people are talking and conversing about what has happened, okay? Uh, the election results and all of that. So it was while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Uh, but their eyes were restrained, verse 16, and so that they did not know him. Uh, and he said to them, uh, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Let me look at you and say, are you sad this evening? Okay, you see, they had a conversation, but he could notice that they were very sad. Uh, what, what kind of conversation is this uh, that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Uh, then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Nigeria? Are you the only stranger in Abuja? And have you not known the things which happened there? In these days. And he said to them as if he didn't know. Oh, when you're about tonight. Is somebody here tonight? And he said to them, what things? Let me tell your neighbor, say, God is saying, what things? Eh? God is just finding out. I tell him, God, what things? What happened? <laughs> You'll be blessed tonight. And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping, somebody say we're hoping, mm. but we're hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Nigeria. Oh, wow. Is that in your Bible? Or is it my Bible? But we're hoping that it was Atiku. Who was going to redeem Nigeria? Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since the election result was announced. It's God that gave me this scripture, I, I honestly, by revelation. I didn't search for this scripture. Hmm. Besides, today is the, <laughs> the third day since INEC announced the results. Hmm. Let's go to verse 25 because of time. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, 
and slow of heart in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. You know, they didn't go to church, but church came to them in the person of Jesus. And Jesus gave them, gave them understanding. Okay, it's a very powerful scripture. Uh, of course, it continues. Uh, he went with them to the house in the breaking of bread. Uh, the Bible says that he revealed himself to them. Praise God. And so, uh, anytime you come into church or you're confused, something you must do, anytime you're going to, you know, uh, please make sure you offer to God praise. God expects praise. Um, also, whenever you come to church, please make sure you pray uh, because you serve a God who answers prayers. And thirdly, every time you come to church, make sure you gain understanding in the name of Jesus. Indeed, as I stand on this pulpit, I remember a man, um, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch, pastors, uh, went to church. I mean, he, he went a long way to church. He traveled all the way from Ethiopia uh, to go to church, uh, uh, ministerio. Uh, and, you know, but he left church and he still didn't have understanding. God had to move who? Philip from Samaria to go and give him understanding. I pray that every time we come before his presence, we will gain understanding in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm totally, um, I mean, jokes apart now because I know that a number of us probably are not even here today uh, because um, a lot of um, people are sad, uh, not happy with what has happened, election results, and the different things that have happened, uh, you know, uh, alleged rigging, malpractice, and all of that. Um, and, and, of course, a lot of that has come also out of, um, um, well, broken expectation from, um, you know, uh, the present president. Uh, a lot of hope was placed on him. And a lot of people believe that it was the Messiah that we were expecting and that everything uh, would be as good as we wanted to be. And that didn't happen. So, of course, we wanted him to be changed uh, and all of that. Now, he wasn't changed by this election. So, we're going, okay, it's going to be another four years of suffering. Let me quickly just say this before I go too far. Um, I would please encourage you not to confess suffering in the next four years. Is somebody here this evening? Okay, if somebody is here this evening, say hallelujah. Okay, you shall have what you say. Somebody say hallelujah. Okay, so no matter who is there, you can't say it's going to be suffering continues. If other people say, you can't open your mouth and say it in the name of Jesus. If you're a member of this church, you can't open your mouth and say the next four years is going to be bad. If you say it, that's what you receive. You know, somebody sent me a text, somebody who should know better, with a big title. You know, let me tell you what the person said. This was even before the results were announced. He said, even if X, Y, meaning uh, article, even if it was this, the mother-in-law, father-in-law of Satan, I will vote for him. I said, be careful what you say. Don't let your emotions get the better of you. To a point. Do you know what it means to say that even if he's the son of Lucifer, I will vote for him? Do you know what it means? I said, read the, the text you just sent to me now. And it's only when they read it that understanding came. You don't go and ensnare yourself with your mouth. Somebody said, I will not ensnare myself with my mouth. You can't open your mouth and say, I went and took covenant with Satan. Because of what? Food on your table? God forbid. Just to survive? I said, you, evangelist, you can open your mouth and say, I will, I will vote for Satan. Do, do you know what it means to vote for Satan? I said, you don't know Satan at all. Though. So I want to please plead with us. Self-control. Self-control. Is somebody here? One of the strongest virtues of a child of God is what? Self-control. But then I believe that we may gain a little bit of understanding this evening in the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Okay. So very quickly, let me just uh, quickly just um, help us. If I just too many things and there's no time, I don't know if God helps me, I will, you know, let's just see what God does. Maybe I may do this in church on Sunday because I already have a message for church on Sunday. But let's see how it goes because I wish more people were here to hear, uh, you know, what I believe God is asking to be able to speak to the church. If you know me, generally I try not to go into things like this. And the reason is because, not because I don't have the information. I do. And not because I don't know what to say. I have. But because I try to be non-partisan, I stay away deliberately. But any of you who is close to me, you know that I'm not stupid or foolish with these things. Praise God. Okay, a few times I've written a few things and I know the level of reception it got. I'm, I'm a trained lawyer and I've, I've observed Nigerian politics for a long time. Okay, let me, let, let me just go ahead 
uh, you know, so while I was sitting there, if I got began to say to me, he said, just say to my people, you know, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, the, the Bible records that it was the year that King Uzziah died that I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. Is somebody here? Sometimes, you, <laughs> Isaiah has been writing from chapter 1. He didn't encounter God. Until whatever, whoever was his king died that he encountered God. What God is saying is that there is no king that is supposed to solve that problem for you. So if God had to kill King Uzziah so that Isaiah would see him, there is no king that is greater than your God. Somebody say hallelujah. So sometimes God will have to kill your, your hope so that you can encounter him in person. Okay, the year King Uzziah died. And if you know that story, I mean, Isaiah had a close relationship with King Uzziah. But God had to kill Isaiah so that, as, I mean, um, King Uzziah, so that Isaiah would begin to come into a greater revelation of who God is. There is no president that is greater than God. None. None. Let me quickly just say a few things, and then we, we go to the main point. Um, number one, God knew the outcome of what this election will be before you enter 2019. Is, is somebody here? So if God gave you a word this year, that word was not contingent on whether article wins or not. Many of you will not clap, but I'm telling you the truth. Any word that God gave to you as a person or to our church, did you think you didn't know who will win the election? Did he give you the word based on if somebody wins? God's word is not contingent or dependent on who wins the election. So if God gave you a word, please run with the word. I want to please beg you. If God gave you a word, he gave you the word, he knew the outcome of this election before it was conducted. Is somebody here? Okay. Number two. No matter who wins any election, you will still have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> Is somebody here? No matter who wins any election, you as a child of God, you will still need to work out your what? Even if, a, well, I don't want to be calling because we're online. Whoever wins, God will still expect that you have to work out everything concerning your life and destiny as a child of God. So it's not that if a particular person wins, you will no longer pray. You will no longer study your Bible. You no longer work out your salvation. No, you will still have to do it. So, so now that the people we expect didn't win, are you going to work out your salvation with fear and trembling? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Because of time, let me just skip to the uh, third one, which is quite important. Let's open to Romans chapter 13. Sorry, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. I'll just quickly read from that very powerful scripture, Romans chapter 9. It's my responsibility as pastor to be able to help us to gain understanding um, in this season that we're in. Um, so we're not going to act like ostrich that will put our, our head in the sand and believe that all is well. Uh, so just to be able to gain some context, I read from verse 9, Romans chapter 9. Uh, for this is the word of promise. Uh, at this time, at this time, I, I will come and Sarah shall have a son. This is Paul uh, writing to the church in Rome. Verse 10. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one man, even by our father Isaac, uh, for the children, verse 11, not yet born, nor having done any good of evil, comma, that the purpose of God, according to what? Eh? Is the word election there? That the purpose of God, according to what? Might what? Him who does what? Who calls? Verse 12. It was said to her, the older shall what? Serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have what? Hated, verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. And, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. Verse 16. So then it's not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, 
but of God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to the last verse because of time, verse 17. For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, for this very purpose I have what? Raised you up that I may show my what? My power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Very quickly because of time. Very quickly. There are two important uh, concepts that I want to talk with you briefly and I'll bring it to come to bear on Nigeria. The very first thing we see there is that election didn't start with you. Election didn't start with INEC. Is somebody here this evening? Election didn't do what? No, I want to hear you this evening. Election didn't start with what? Did you see the word election in the Bible? Okay, the Bible records that there were two people in the womb of Rebecca. Oh, sorry. Yeah? Yeah, Rebecca. Two people, two nations, two persons. Esau and who? Esau and who? And the Bible records that even before they did wrong or right, God had already elected one. The Bible says that even when there were no works, they've not done anything, they've not done good or bad. But by election, somebody say election. Somebody say by election. God had elected who? Who did he elect? Jacob. Now, until recently, when you started to hear uh, people like Mensal Tabil, how many of you like Jacob? Um, some of us, some of us, how many of you like Jacob? Do you like him? Do you think he's a good guy? Eh? I mean, before now, do you think Jacob is a good guy? We all thought he was a what? His name is Swindler. His name is what? Cheat and all of that. Yeah? But God chose him. God elected him. He said, Jacob I have loved. Esau I have done what? Yeah, 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 yeah. If an election was going to take place in that time, between the two of them, who would they vote for? Is somebody here? Many of you first believed it today that Esau was cheated. But in the eyes of God, before any cheating took place, he had appointed. One of the things I can say is that a lot of Christians prayed for this election. Is it not true? Can we be honest? Can we say we prayed? Come on, a lot of Christians. Because people have suffered. People have gone through so much. So churches prayed. This church prayed. Did we pray? We prayed before the election was shifted. We prayed after. In fact, many of you didn't know this. We, we built. <laughs> we're like native doctors on this altar. How many of you were here? We're like native. In fact, when Affordale was doing what they were saying, I need to go and sanctify this altar. We're like native doctors. We erected a worship altar here. A prayer altar. And I know for the first time, people prayed from their hearts. Did you pray from your heart? I prayed from my heart. Now, do we serve a God that answers prayers? So after you have prayed and you still see the result, what does that say to you? Every time you have prayed over it and you know you have prayed, whatever the outcome is, you say, Father, I thank you. Because there are things you don't know that God knows. I always have said to this church, what you know is, is 0, 0, 0, 0.2%. When God makes his choice, he knows things you don't know. Even me at my little level, there are things I know that you don't know. Talk less of God. You know, God will be upset that after you have prayed, you see the result, then you are angry. At the very worst, you say, Father, I don't understand this, so, but I give you the praise. In all things, we what? That are the very, very basic. But I'll be honest with you. A lot of people who told you they, they had seen who was going to win the, 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 the election. I like to look at many of them in the face now. Because they don't know nothing. There are things God knows that you don't know. Does that mean that the person who has won the election is a good man? No. Does that mean he has done everything right? No. But there are reasons why God does what he does. Is somebody here? 
In fact, I was talking to somebody this morning for over an hour, and I said, you don't even know whether this person who is here is breaking something that the person who will have come cannot break. You don't know whether the person who is here is just building a bridge to another, another thing that will happen. He may not be the main person. I, I, somebody, I, I want to go deep now. Do you know that he could just be setting the stage for, for what will happen in the future? And do you know that the person who didn't win, you don't know him. You don't know in the place of the spirit, the person could have taken us 20 years back. You see, and the church should be careful that you don't vote people because of what to eat. God is not interested in just what you're going to eat for today. God is, and beyond Sunday we'll teach about this. God is a generational God. He looks beyond four years, five years. When God plans, he plans 100 years. So you're going through something in two, three years, and then you, 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 you say, you say even, if it's the, even if it's the son of Lucifer, I enter covenant. God forbid. God, we're not that hungry. Let me tell your neighbor, we're not that hungry. We're not that hungry. We're not that hungry. We're not that hungry. Come on now. We're not that hungry. We're not that hungry. You know, sometimes <laughs> the devil, the apparent devil you know may be good at the one you don't know. You don't know what, what covenants people are carrying and God is delivering you for. You have no idea. So we should be careful that we don't walk by sight or by our emotions. In, and I'm saying this as a principle generally, not just only for elections. Be careful. Don't walk by sight or how you feel. Because your sight and feelings may be totally wrong. Somebody say hallelujah. Because like I said, with, 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 with Esau and Jacob, many of us for many years kept on voting for who? For Esau. We kept on feeling sorry for him. But who did God elect? Jacob. One of the last verses, there, verse 17 there, uh, we, can, we can look at it. Verse 17. For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I've what? I've raised you up, that I may show my power in what? In you, and my name may be what? Now, we know, do, you know, do you know which Pharaoh this is? The Pharaoh in the time of who? Moses. In fact, the very first time the word purpose appears in the Bible was regarding this Pharaoh. You go, let's look at Exodus 9. It's same. It was repeated. Exodus 9, 16. That's the very first time the word purpose. Um, and, I'll, and I'll explain why I'm just spending time on it. Exodus 9, 16. Exodus 9, 16. Quickly now. Exodus 9, 16. But indeed, what? For this purpose of what? There are two things I, I want us to take home tonight. The first one is election. God does election. And God is not biased in his election. He doesn't rig his election. The second thing is God carries purpose. So when God decides that he's going to go in a particular direction, there's a purpose. That purpose we may not know. That purpose you may not what? You may never know the purpose. In the case of Pharaoh, when this Pharaoh was being raised up as king, God was raising him up to be able to show his glory in Egypt. So we still don't have the full picture of why God has allowed General Buhari to win. But the purpose of God by election shall stand. Are you here tonight? The purpose of God by election shall stand. Part of what we know, uh, Pastor Nehemiah, and a few, of, a few of us talk about is this. Have you ever considered the fact that truly maybe it was Buhari's, um, you know, um, God's appointment for Buhari to have won in 2015. But how many people prayed for him to succeed? How many of us? How many of us prayed for him? Not talking about church. How many of us prayed for him to succeed? Now, the truth is, if God raises up somebody and you don't pray for him, there's a vacuum. So, what the purpose for which he was raised, if you, not, you don't uphold him, he will fail in it. Because there are people around him who have, who have other agendas. And so, and no matter who God raises up, the person must be lifted up in prayer. That's why what God commands. If you don't pray for the person, the person will fail. Listen, even if Article won this election, you don't pray for him, he will fail. Do you know the pressures that are on the throne? Do you know the pressures that are on the throne? Do you know how many people who are, who are visiting and bearing things to control the throne? And then the church doesn't pray, and you think an unbeliever will just do right. 
And that's why, even though it's going to be difficult, we're going to pray tonight. Can you stand up? Can we stand up tonight? We're going to pray because of time. Hallelujah. We're going to pray tonight. Let's see what the Bible says about praying, uh, you know, for those in authority. Let's see what the Bible says. Because it's actually a commandment. Now, until um, the courts or Supreme Court or, you know, the overturn this, well, we are stuck with Buhari, so we must pray for him. Is somebody here? Until he's changed, he's our president. So we must pray for him. Amen? And if he's not going to be our president, he doesn't, you know, let me tell you this. You see, people, church, I, w I won't talk too much, but let me just say this. Do you think it would take God anything to make Buhari sleep and don't wake up? Do you know Buhari didn't need to contest his election? He's been the sickest, if there's any word like that. He's been the what? The sickest president. What did he take any did he take anything for God? Just while he's away in England, he sleeps, he doesn't wake up. You don't think your prayer can do it? So for him to get well and contest, can't you can you think? Can you think? For him to can you see the guy is jumping now? Beauty is more handsome now. Handsome. But, but, you, you do you need to pray too much for, for Yaradua to sleep and not wake up? What about what about uh, our friend Abacha? Nature will take his course. He does. He didn't need to contest the election. He will have slept. So if God didn't allow him to sleep, there's a reason. And if God still wants him to sleep, you know what? Somebody shout hallelujah. So our God is still the governor of the nation. Somebody say hallelujah. Come, let me tell somebody you have not lost anything. God is still in control. God is still in control. God is still in control. You don't need anybody from anywhere to, to lift you up. God wants to bless you. He's going to bless you this year in the name of Jesus. He's not the person in Asherah that will determine your destiny this year. God has planned and purpose what he's going to do in your life this year. He doesn't listen. In fact, the church even prospers in the time when somebody is in oppression over them. Your joy will not be based on who sits on Asherah. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you're dependent on... How many of you... Are you related to Adiku? Will he make you minister? You will still need to trust God. Somebody shout hallelujah. All of us will still need to trust God and pray. At the same way we've been doing. Because he's not a Christian. Is, some, is, is pastor helping anybody this evening? Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. And we're going to do a lot of that this year. We're going to pray. Whoever is there, the Bible says we should pray for the person. Come quickly now. Second Timothy chapter 2. Media, are you angry with me? Put the scripture. <laughs> you know, some of these media people, they are PDP people. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. You therefore, my son, what? Be strong in what? No, no. First Timothy. First Timothy, sorry. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. First Timothy, please. Quick, quick. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. Thank you, thank you, media. Thank you, media. I know you're not in PDP. Hallelujah. I just want us to laugh tonight. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Quickly now. First Timothy. <laughs> you know I have a Bible. I can read it from you too. Let's read together now. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that what? Supplications, prayers, intercessions, and what? Giving our times be made for what? All men go to verse 2. For kings and who are what? That we what? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. God go to verse 3. For this is what? Why is it good to pray for them? For this is what? Good and what? Acceptable in what? In the sight of God our Savior. Let's go to the next verse. Now verse 4. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Go to the next verse. For there is one, what? One God and mediator. Go to verse 9 because of time. Go to verse 9. Ah, uh, verse 9. Is it verse 9 now? Okay, no, no. There's a, script, there's a, there's a verse there that says... Um, there's a verse that says that, uh, that there's no one who has, you know, who comes into authority that God has not appointed. Is, is it somewhere there, right? 
somewhere there. But there's no one who has been who comes to authority that God has not appointed. Okay. Um, and I know that Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. Can we put Daniel chapter 2, verse 21? Uh, pastors, let me just get that reference. Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. Quickly. Daniel 2, 21. Daniel 2, 21. Quick. Daniel 2, 21. And what? And it changes what? The times and the seasons. He does what? He removes kings and raises up kings. If God wants to remove anybody, does he have the power to do it? He can do it. So if he has not changed it, there's a purpose for it. Can we thank God for what God has done in Nigeria? Can we thank God? Can we thank God? Let me be honest with you. It's not rigging that puts anybody in power. No. If God has appointed it, he has appointed it. By the way, both sides were rigging. I hope you know that. Let's just begin to thank God for what God has done already. Father, we thank you for, for where our country is today. We thank you for the elections on Saturday. We want to give you praise and we give you glory. Lord, we may not fully understand all that is going on, but Lord, we trust you and we thank you. Because Lord, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. Lord, and we gave offerings. We made sacrifices. We entered into a lot of common covenants, even, even here in this our church. And I know in different churches in Nigeria. And Lord, but, but indeed, we still have seen this outcome. Come. And therefore, our Father and our God, we want to give you praise and we want to give you thanks. For your word says that in all things we should thank you. In all things we should praise you. In all things we should give you thanks. And your word says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, Lord, your word says and that all things work together for good for those who love you and for those who are called according to your purpose. And therefore, Lord, as for your church in Nigeria and for your, your, your sons and your daughters, for believers in Nigeria, we know that all things are working together for our good. For Lord, we lifted up our voices and we cried out to you. The same way Israel lifted up their voice in captivity and cried out to you. And Lord, you sent a Messiah. You sent a deliverer. You sent Moses. Lord, we prayed and we prayed and we called out to you. Lord, because of, the, of our heart taskmasters uh, and the things we couldn't understand uh, and the different issues of our lives uh, but uh, this has been the outcome uh, of the election we want to give you praise uh, for we know that indeed you change times and seasons uh, it's in your hand to change times and seasons uh, it's not in any man's hands uh, your word says that you change times and seasons it is totally within your ability within your control and within your power to change times and seasons uh, and your word says that you raise up kings uh, you remove kings and you put down kings. Lord, it's within your power and your control to set up kings and to remove kings. Lord, and therefore we know that if it's your will to remove the present king over Nigeria, Lord, on this holy altar and in this congregation, we know that you carry within you the power and the authority to remove kings and to set up kings. Mazele bro kazula haya. You are the governor of the nations and the kingdom is the Lord's. The kingdom of Nigeria is the Lord's. Your word says in the book of Revelation that the kingdoms of our God, they have become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. The kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ and you shall reign forever. And therefore we declare even now that the kingdoms of Nigeria Lord from Sokoto my father and my God to Oshun to Ogun to Ek Kitsi to Ondo, Lord to Kabi to Yobe, Lord in Zamfara, Mazema Lebros here, Lord from the Caliphate, Ela to the Oni of Ife, Malebro Keseha, to Babangida in Mina, Ezema Lebro Kesula, to Danjuma, La Besema, to General Guso, La Basaya, Iala Mama Mazazaza, the kingdoms that have controlled Nigeria, O Baba Hiseha, over the last 50 years, over the last 58 years, Yes, Mama Mazer, you said they shall become the kingdoms of our God and His Christ, the kingdoms of our country, that which has held sway, that which has controlled what has happened, that which has controlled who comes into power, that which controls who becomes president. You said the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of our God and His Christ, and you shall reign forever. 
and you shall reign forever. We declare you once again tonight uh, as the governor over the nations. Uh, you are the governor over the nations. Uh, Nigeria is among the nations. Uh, and therefore, our Father, we declare we pronounce you. You are the governor over the nations. Uh, come on, somebody begin to declare that God is the governor over Nigeria. It doesn't matter who is president. Uh, it doesn't matter who was rigged into, a, into office. Uh, our God is the governor over the nations. Uh, and the Bible records uh, in Psalm 22 verse 30, maybe so it media, Psalm 22 verse 30, the kingdom is the Lord's. Uh, show it in the old King James. Uh, show it in the old King James Psalm 22 verse 30. Amale broko sule baba. Ale broke zula. Let your kingdom come. Uh, Lord, let your kingdom come over Nigeria. Lord, at this very delicate time, uh, let your kingdom come. Uh, let your will, let your purpose. Uh, Father Lord is the one who has emerged uh, as president after this election. Uh, if it not be your will, uh, Lord, it's in your power and authority to remove him, my Father. Uh, and therefore, Lord, uh, because we, we have little understanding uh, and because we know that you, you, you conduct your own election. Uh, Lord, you said, uh, like Abel Masul, uh, you said to Samuel uh, when he went to the house of Jesse to appoint a king, uh, Lord, he, he, he based his appointment uh, on, what, uh, on what he could see, uh, on what he could perceive. Uh, but Lord, you said to him, uh, you said the Lord does not see the way a man sees. Uh, the Lord looks at the heart. Uh, Lord, you alone know why you choose. Uh, and you alone know why you appoint. Uh, Lord, we, we, are, we are limited in our knowledge. Uh, and even at this election, my father, let your election stand. Uh, let your election uh, that is uh, predetermined by your purpose, uh, let it stand stand in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to open your mouth and say, let the purpose of God by election, let it stand over Nigeria. Not what we want, but what God wants. Not what we desire, but that which God desires. Our God plans for generations. Our God is not a short-term planner. Our God is not a short-term God. And therefore, my Father and my God, we can see beyond our, our immediate, our immediate immediate existence. But Lord, you are able to see what we can see. And that's why, Lord, even while the two boys were in the womb, you had made your election. You have said, no, not this one, but this one. And therefore, my father, like a besem eha, iyala mose mule pru kazaya, iyala masule pro la ba la ba la ba ha, iyamase mole pru kazaya, iyala masule pro se, kama kama samaya, lebo le pro se meme ya hala, li pro se mule basaya. Now we're gonna we're gonna obey scripture. The scripture we read in First Timothy chapter two, uh, from verse nine, it begins to say that we should pray for kings and for those in authority. Can we open our mouth? He said, "For this is this is this is acceptable in the sight of God. This is pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. If you want to be in the correct will of God, then you pray for anybody who is in authority. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter who they are. Now listen to me. Listen to me. We're going to close shortly." When, when the writer of Romans, Paul, I believe, was writing this, pastors, there was no democracy. There were no democracy. Who were kings then? Caesars. Emperors. Were they voted into office? No. But they still say you should pray for them. There was no democracy then. Democracy is just about 200 years old. But it says pray for kings. And for all those in authority. That means that then you cannot determine who was king. But you still pray for the person. So that we can live what? Godly and what? Peaceable, quiet and peaceable lives. Your prayers can direct that person. The Bible says that the heart of the king is what? The heart of the king is where? In the hands of God. And like a stream of water, he will what? That's why you pray for them. No matter who is there, as you pray, God begins to turn their hearts. Can we begin to lift up and say, Lord, everyone you have appointed, Lord, we lift them up and we pray for them tonight. Come on now. 
Father, in the name that is above every name, Lord, we may not fully understand why you select and why you elect, and why you choose and why you pick. But Lord, we pray for everyone who by your sovereign and divine will, you have picked and chosen. Lord, we pray for them. Lord, until and unless you change the present president, Lord, we lift up President Muhammad Buhari before you. That your will will be done in his life. And the purpose for why you have raised him, it shall be fulfilled, it shall be made perfect in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will use him as your instrument for the heart of the king is in your hands. La masa mala bro kasula. Remasa mala bro. Ya mama mama sule bro kesaya. La bro kesela. If you permit him, let him, if you allowed him to win, Lord, you can control his heart. Maze male bro se. And the church even this evening. La masa mala bro kasula. We pray for him. And for all the national assembly people who won the election. We pray for everyone who has been. Lord, I won the election for the Senate. And for the house of reps, la masa mala broke sulaba, iya mama mazala, iya masa male bose. He said, first of all, the prayers will be prayed for all men, especially for kings and for those in authority, that we may live peaceable and quiet lives, for this is acceptable in the sight of God. And therefore, our Father, all over the nation of Nigeria, we lift up everyone, a mayeka bula, who by accident or by default or by cheating but you have permitted them to emerge from this process Lord we lift them up now we lift up every king we lift up every president every senator every member of the house we hand them over into your hands for you can control you can determine what they do my father Lord the same way you controlled and determined what Cyrus did Lord you call Cyrus you anointed and you said for the sake of your people Israel, Lord, you commanded him to do your will, even when Cyrus did not know you. Your word says, even though he did not know you, but he did your will. Lord, for everyone who has emerged from this election, from the president downwards, I pray in the name of Jesus, even when they don't know you, my father, even when they don't have an encounter with you, even when they don't know Jesus, Lord, you can use them the way you same way you use Cyrus and the same way you use his son Darius to favor your people. I pray in the name of Jesus, even as we repent, that in days and years before now we have not prayed the way we should pray for the kings and those in authority. We ask for your mercy. But right now, Lord, we pray and we say, Lord, take hold of his soul. Take hold of his heart. You said the heart of the king is in your hands and like a river, like a stream of water, you will turn it. Oh my Lama Celebos. The church is risen up. Another altar of prayer. You will turn. You will turn his heart. You will turn the heart of all who will emerge through this process. Flawed as it may be. My practice as it may be. Rigged as it may be. Malebra Mamazaya. Even when they don't know you, Lord. We lift them up to you, my father. Ayama Mama Zaya. Before they are sworn in again. Before they are, they are put into office, Lord is still in your control. It's still in your power. It's still in your control. For the heart of the king. For the heart of the king is in the hands of God. One of the greatest kings that ever lived was Nebuchadnezzar. I'm sure we know this story. The, the story is in, in the book of Daniel. Minisayo. When Nebuchadnezzar began to exalt himself before God, what did God do? Cut him down, threw him into the bush. He became a beast, an animal. His, his nails grew like an animal. All his hair came out until he repented and God brought him back. That God has not changed. We believers can't just be talking anyhow. God is still in control. Come on, somebody say God is still in control. And I'll say again, your destiny is not in the hands of the president. It's in the hands of, of the God. And we're going to walk under our salvation with fear and trembling. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. And so if, if they rig themselves into office, God will rig them out in the name of Jesus. Our breath is in God's hands. 
Finally, I want us to pray for the peace over Nigeria. I mean, all kinds of things are going on right now. Let's pray for peace. Let's speak peace over our, over our nation. The peace of God. The peace of God. The Bible declares that Jesus Christ is, is the Prince of Peace. Begin to say, Lord, I speak your peace over our, over our nation. The Bible says we should begin to declare peace. Peace over our boundaries and over our walls. Lord, we begin to speak peace over, over the geographical entity called Nigeria. Lord, we begin to speak peace over, over the political entity called Nigeria. Lord, we speak peace over, over the federal capital territory. Come on, come on, please pray, pray now, pray from your heart now. Begin to speak and begin to declare peace. Say Abuja, we speak peace over you. We speak peace over the FCT. We speak peace over Nanya, over Massacre. We speak peace over, over the flash points in the FCT. Wherever problems and trouble is being stirred up. We say peace. We declare peace, peace. Peace over you, Abuja. We say peace over Lagos, over rivers. We say peace over Aquaibom, over Benue. We say peace. We say peace. Nigeria, peace, peace, peace in the name of Jesus. As a church of Jesus Christ, we say peace. Mama Salebro Kezaya. We declare shalom, shalom. Nigeria, we say shalom, shalom over you. We say the peace of God. The man can't understand. We pray it over you. We decree it over you. We say peace. I am a celebrate. Say, Masule Mamasaya from Edo. Ia la Masema to Zamfara. We say peace, Nigeria. We say peace, Nigeria. Over every local government in rivers all the way to Baranu. We say peace. We say peace. Let the prince of peace let him rule over our nation. Let the prince of peace, let him rule over our nation. Even now we release the angels that keep peace. We release the angels that make for peace. Let them begin to crisscross over the nation of Nigeria. We say the angelic host that mandates peace and that enforces peace. We speak peace. Nigeria, hear the 